what are some techniques for anomaly detection? Let's see. Why do we care about anomalies? Anomalies are those points in our data set that do not exhibit the typical behavior. These could be fraudulent data points or they could just be points generated because of bad inputs. But it's often important to identify these anomalies and sometimes remove them in order to build good models. So if we build a model for our data set without removing the anomalies or the outliers, we might end up with a bad model that does not fit even the typical points. And another important use case is to just find the anomalies themselves to prevent bad users from using our system. For example, you might have uh, financial transactions that you're analyzing and you want to identify bad transactions, which are like high risk transactions that could be because of fraud. So there are two kinds of high level approaches. One is supervised techniques for anomaly detection and unsupervised techniques. So supervised techniques involve those techniques where we have some examples of anomalous data points. For instance, the anomalous, the two anomalous data points here are marked in red. And hence, we can train a classifier model to learn which point is anomalous and which point is not. But very often, we do not have the luxury of such labels. And we must resort to unsupervised techniques for anomaly detection. So we will talk about five popular techniques for anomaly detection that are unsupervised at a high level. And we will have detailed videos for these later. So the first is Z-score for anomaly detection. So Z-score measures how far away a particular point is from the mean. So the idea is that if you look at this example here, most of the points are uh, around uh, this point 55. And if you look at 110, it is much farther away and it's an anomaly. And since distances are often relative, it's often normalized by the standard deviation to see how many standard deviations away a particular data point is. And that's the basic idea between Z-score. Another popular technique is local outlier factor for anomaly detection. And the basic idea here is that if you take a point and look at the density of points around it, for a typical non-anomalous point, you will find a higher density compared to an anomalous point which will have a very uh, low number of neighbors close to it. So the density of points around it will be lower. And that's the basic uh, intuition for local outlier factor. Another popular technique is autoencoders. So the idea behind autoencoders is that we construct an encoder decoder system using a simple neural network. So the idea is there is an input layer which takes an input and then encodes it into possibly a compressed form and then there is an output layer which decodes whatever is in the hidden layer. So the encoding and decoding is trained to work very well for a typical point. But when you give a outlier point or an anomalous point as input, the decoding is not as accurate. And when we look at the error of decoding, we can figure out whether it's an anomalous point or a regular point. Isolation forests are the fourth technique that we're going to talk about, which are very commonly used for anomaly detection. And the basic idea here is that it's again a tree based technique based on uh, something like decision trees, where you try to partition the data multiple times in order to isolate a point so that only that point lies in the partition. You keep subdividing until you reach that point where only that particular point you're looking at lies inside the division. And the number of steps taken to isolate a typical point is much higher than let's say an anomalous point, which is at the fringe of the data set and can be isolated by just like a few subdivisions. Again, we have a video to talk about this in more detail. The last, the fifth technique is one class SVM. So the basic idea uh, of an SVM is uh, that it finds a hyperplane between 
the positive and the negative examples that separates the positive and negative examples. In this case, we want to find a hyperplane that somehow encapsulates all the non-anomalous data. So in doing so, we will end up having the anomalous data points outside the hyperplane. And how this is done is something that's explained uh, in a subsequent video. So to sum up, we looked at techniques for anomaly detection. We saw that at a high level, we have supervised techniques which work very well, but we need labeled data or we need examples of anomalies. Then we have unsupervised techniques where we can work without these anomaly examples. And some of these are Z scores, local outlier factor, encoder decoder technique, which is uh, basically a simple neural network based technique. Then we looked at isolation forests and also one class SVMs. I hope you enjoyed this video and we will have more detailed explanations for each of these techniques in our remaining videos. Thank you.